Welcome everyone to our November wellness webinar. Um, Sportable is proud to have tonight Alexander Lavalle. I think I said that correctly, um, who is joining us from Sheltering Arms Neurofit. Um, Alex is a certified personal trainer and he's going to share a lot more about his background, um, but we're just excited to have him here tonight to share more, more with us about um, creating an exercise routine in your life to help promote your overall health and wellness, whether you're an athlete or just somebody who's trying to get more physically active. So thank you all for joining us. Um, housekeeping, please make sure that you're muted um, and any questions that you have, we'll have plenty of time for questions or answers, questions and answers, throw them into the chat and I'll moderate uh, some questions and answers towards the end of the session for everybody. Um, but yep, Alex, I'll let you take it away. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank you guys so much for being here with me. Uh, you guys could have been anywhere else doing anything else at 6 p.m. on a Monday night. So thankful, thankful, thankful that you guys decided to join with me with this webinar. Alrighty, so let's get started. First, who is Alexander? So Alexander is a graduate of Virginia Commonwealth University, 2018, uh, was a health and exercise science major uh, upon graduation. I became a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. And in 2020, right before COVID hit, I came on to the Shelton Arms NeuroFit team as the certified exercise physiologist. All right. So for those of you that know me, um, you guys know how much I love motivational quotes. For people that don't know me, I love motivational quotes. So I'm going to start off with a motivational quote that's going to tie back in later on to the lesson. Uh, this one is one by one of my favorite uh, athletes, Deion Sanders. He says, if you don't value consistency, it's going to be hard for you to become successful and sustain it. Consistency involves a level of commitment, a level of focus, a thirst, and a hunger for more. I'm, I'm going to say that one more time, make sure that that hits home. If you don't value consistency, it's going to be hard for you to become successful and sustain it. Consistency involves a level of commitment, a level of focus, a thirst, and a hunger for more. Now, what is exercise? Now, a lot of times exercise gets, gets intertwined and gets confused with physical activity or physical fitness. While those can be interchangeable on some certain aspects, exercise has its own definition along with physical activity and physical fitness I'm gonna tell you guys later. So what is exercise? I got, you, I got you guys two definitions right here. So exercise is an activity that requiring physical effort carried out to sustain or improve health and fitness. It's also described as a subset of physical activity that is planned, structured, and repetitive, and has a final or intermediate objective, the improvement or maintenance of physical fitness. Now, as I mentioned before, I talked to you guys about how physical activity, exercise, physical fitness, they're all intertwined, they're all tossed around in the same concept. Now, but let's, try, let's try to describe the difference between the two, between the, all three of those. So, Physical activity is any body movement produced by the contraction of skeletal muscles and the result of substantial increase in caloric requirements or over resting energy expenditure. So for example, let's say if I have my arm resting right here on this desk, right? And I lift my arm up and then I put it right back down. That is physical activity, right? Because it, requir it requires calories for me to lift my arm up and put it back down versus me just having my arm resting here. Now, that's not exercise because that's not something that's repetitive and they're looking for that intermediate, that fitness improvement. So that's the definition between physical activity. Now let's look at physical fitness, which is the ability to carry out daily tasks with vigor and alertness without undue fatigue and with ample energy to enjoy leisure, leisure time activities and pursuits and meet unforeseen emergencies. So for example, let's say that, you know, you're doing your activities of daily living, you are, you know, you're vacuuming up, you're doing dishes, you're washing clothes, you're able to do all of that and then still have time, still have energy to do, let's say, go to the gym and work out or, you know, go enjoy a social event with your friends or let's say you have a, an emergency occur where you need to be active and fast, just like that. The ability to have that capability or to do certain things like that, that's your physical fitness. Now, let's take a look at the different types of exercise. So I don't know if you guys know this or not, but there's different types of exercises divided up in different sorts of categories. And we're gonna describe those with these four categories I have right here. So we have aerobic exercise, which is exercise that is oxygen dependent. For example, like brisk walking, 
up-tempo manual wheelchair mobility, jogging, dancing, swimming, things of the nature, things that require that constant breathing in oxygen, right? That is aerobic exercise. Now let's look at anaerobic exercise, which is intense physical activity of very short duration fueled by the energy sources within contracting muscles and is independent of the use of inhaled oxygen as an energy source. For example, moving furniture, high intensity interval training, also known as HIIT training, powerlifting, things of that nature. Now, when I know when people, when you think about, you know, anaerobic exercise, think about lifting weights, for example, you're, yes, you're breathing, but you want to make sure too that you avoid holding in your breath. As I uh, detailed it here, please avoid the Valsalva maneuver. Now, some of you guys may see that word and like, Alex, what in the world are you talking about? Don't worry, I got you. So the Valsalva maneuver is where, let's say someone is doing like a bench press, right? And they're about to do their max, they pick up the weight, they come down, they're not breathing, they're not breathing, they're not breathing, and then they push that weight back up, still not breathing. As soon as that weight comes back up, boom, they start going, <sighs> right? Normally their face is all red and stuff like that. That's the ball solving maneuver, where you're holding in your breath while doing it, doing an activity like that nature. That's bad. Uh, you could That could lead to you passing out. So don't do that. But I do have this question come up a lot. Well, Alex, how do I breathe while I'm exercising? Right, while I'm doing powerlifting. I'm gonna give you guys two definitions. I'm gonna give you guys, well, kind of two examples. I'll give you guys the scientific answer, then I'm gonna give you guys the real basic and simple answer. So let's say if you're doing, we use the bench press again. Let's say if you're doing the bench press, right? You unrack the weight, it's coming, as the weight's coming down, you are breathing in, right? As soon as that, you're ready to push that weight back up, you are, you're pushing back out, right? So breathing in as it's coming down, breathing out as it's pushing up. Now, some people may be like, Alex, how in the world are going to remember to do all that and remember to breathe in during this way or breathe out during that way? I'm going to make it simple for you. Just count out loud. It's simple as that. Um, if you sit there, you're just going, coming it down, push it out, one, two, three. That's you breathing right there. Talking is breathing. I often think about the example, uh, a life lesson that happened with me and my mom uh, about, I'd say, when I was in elementary school. Um, we were walking around my elementary school track. And during that time, you know, I was listening to music while I was walking. And I guess my mom, you know, I had childhood asthma growing up as a kid. And my mom knew that I wasn't breathing a whole lot in an efficient manner. And she told me to sing the songs as I'm walking. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, and this younger age, I'm like, why? Why, why, why do you have me singing these songs? Like, what, what's the purpose of that? Lo and behold, I didn't realize that what she was doing was she was helping me remember to breathe while I'm exercising. Talking is breathing. Now let's look at the next one, flexibility. Now I'm gonna give, I give you guys this simple definition right here, but there are different types of flexibility that we'll get into in a little bit. So to make it simple, flexibility is described as the range of motion of joints or a group of joints, such as you know with the skeletal muscles. Now, there are many different types of stretching. I don't know if you guys ever heard of, there's called dynamic stretching. There's static stretching in the, both the passive and active capacities. There's also ballistic stretching and proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about three different types of stretching, but I'm gonna detail some other ones as well. So dynamic stretching, that involves a gradual transition from one body position to another and progressively increasing the reach and range of motion as the movements is re repeated several times. So let's say, for example, if you've ever seen one of the athletes, you know, they're doing like a lunge position and, you know, they're holding that there for a second and then they're bringing it back out and then they go back in. They're going a little bit deeper, but then this time they're only, they're holding it for, let's say like 15 seconds, but they're much deeper, right? Then they pull back out and then they go back in again, but this time they're more and more deeper, right? Each single time they're getting deeper and deeper to hold it in. That is dynamic stretching. But I don't want you guys to get that confused with ballistic stretching. Ballistic stretching is where you're bouncing back and forth. So you ever seen like some amateurs that are, you know, trying to stretch, trying to get themselves ready, let's say for a race or whatever, they're, they're doing a lunge, but they're bouncing back and forth repetitively, right? That's the ballistic stretching. We don't want that because that can lead to many different types of injuries. So you want to be careful and be careful and be careful to make sure that you avoid that. Now, let's look at active static stretching, which involves holding a stretch position using the strength of antagonist muscles. This is often found in many different forms of yoga. I don't know if you ever got, if you guys remember the classic, you know, tree pose, right? Where you're, you're holding your hands up, you've got one leg straight, one leg on the other, you know, you're balancing yourself, you're trying to work on that balance, you're trying to stretch out your upper body. That entails is active static stretching because you're depending upon your leg to make sure that you're balanced as you're doing another stretch. Now, 
one of the most common stretches out there is the passive static stretch, which anybody that's been a client of mine, we do this almost every session and towards the end of the beginning, which involves assuming a position while holding a limb or other body part with, with or without the assistance of a partner or, or a device, for example, like elastic bands. Let's say, for example, if somebody is laying flat on their back, right, and I got the leg straight and I got the leg going up right this right here and holding that for about 30 seconds, that is passive static stretch. Or let's say if someone's at the gym and they're doing it, they have like, you know, let's say they have uh, elastic bands or they got a belt and they're holding their leg up, that is still passive stretching. All right, now the last one I wanna talk about is neuromotor exercise, which is training that involves motor skills such as balance, coordination, gait, agility, proprioceptive training, and it's also some, sometimes called functional fitness. Now, I don't know if you guys see the picture that's on the left, but there is a young man by the name of LeBron James. He is balancing on a yoga ball, what looks like he appears to be doing bicep curls. Now, this is neuromotor because he's using, he's balancing on the ball for his core stability, right? But he's still doing exercise with those arms as well, doing those bicep curls or doing whatever he's doing with those arms, right? That is neuromuscular, where he's training his body to be able to be coordinated as he's doing a different task. So that way, when he's on the court, he's able to turn quickly. He's able to be more to be more, uh, how, how can I say this, more efficient in what he's doing and things of that nature. Now, let's look at what makes an exercise training session. Now, I'm going to give you guys the four pillars of exercise training, and we're going to kind of go from there. So exercise is made up of a warm-up phase, and that warm-up phase is, cons is consists of about minimum five to ten minutes to a light to moderate intensity aerobic and or muscular endurance activity. The warm-up is the transitional phase that allows the body to adjust to the changing physiological, biomechanical, bioenergetic demands of the conditioning or sport-specific phases of the exercise session. Now, I don't know if you guys see that word, but sport-specific, it doesn't have to mean, you know, like you're doing, for example, you can mean that you're doing basketball or something like that, but sport-specific just means that whatever is your main focus for exercising during that current training session. So, for example, if we're going to go back to the bench press example. If I'm getting ready to bench press, let's say 100 pounds, right, on the bar. The first thing I'm going to do when I'm warming up, I'm just going to do just the bar. I don't need any weight on there. I'm just going to do just the bar just to get that motion, just get my arms ready for what's about to happen, right? The next is a conditioning phase, which includes aerobic resistance, flexibility, neuromotor exercise, and or sport specific activities. And like you see before, for you, this lasts about 20 to 60 minutes. This is like your main thing. This is what you're here to do. This is the meat that's in your sandwich right here, right? Now let's look at the cool down. Follow, see, followed by the conditioning phase is the cool down period, which involves aerobic and or muscular endurance activity of light to moderate intensity, lasting at least about five minutes. The purpose of this phase is to allow gradual recovery of the heart rate and blood pressure and to remove the removal of metabolic end products from the muscles used during that most intense exercise conditioning phase. This prevents blood pooling. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that phrase, blood pooling, but that's when blood is unable to pump back into your heart and pulls and collects in your legs, ankles, and or feet. And this can cause uh, pain, cramps, leg ulcers. So you want to make sure that if you're doing things, for example, like I remember growing up when I ran track, uh, we always had a warm up when we had that race. And then we always had that cool down. We always had to make sure that we cooled down those muscles after making them work for 400 meters or 800 meters or however long I ran during that time. Uh, always want to make sure you have, a, you have a cool down phase. And lastly, you want to have a stretching, which is stretching just like we talked about before. Last about 10 minutes after the exercise. Or if this also can be uh, done before the conditioning phase as well uh, to kind of get your body ready. So we're looking at if you're stretching before your conditioning, your conditioning phase, you're looking at more of that dynamic stretching that we talked about before. If you're stretching after your cool down phase, you're looking at more like that passive static stretching. All righty, now let's look at some recommendations. Now I have two different sources of recommendations here for you guys. I have the ACSM that have the Physical Activity Guidelines Advisory Committee Report. Now to, give, to keep you guys in mind, this report was did come out in 2008, but I think it still holds weight today. So the ACSM required all healthy adults age 18 through 65 should participate in moderate intensity aerobic physical activity for at least 30 minutes a day for five days a week or vigorous intensity aerobic activity for at least 20 minutes for three days out of the week. Now, let's look at the physical activity guidelines for the advisory committee. All Americans should participate in an amount of energy expenditure equivalent to 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity aerobic activity or 75 minutes a week of vigorous intensity 
intensity, aerobic activity, or a combination of both, right? So we hear, we hear that word again that we talked about earlier, aerobic, right? You know, make sure you get that cardio in. So I got something for you guys too. I don't know how many of you guys don't like weightlifting or like powerlifting. Um, but also the guidelines for both these uh, organizations say that adults should do muscular strength training activities that are moderate to high intensity and involves all major muscle groups that are greater than or equal to two days out of the week because these activities provide additional health benefits. I didn't write that. That's what's in the, that's what's in the guidelines. So we want you guys to make sure that while you're doing your cardio, you're also getting some strength training done as well. It's very imperative for your health. Speaking of health, let's talk about the benefits. I've been educating you guys a little bit about, you know, you know, what is exercise, but now I need to sell you guys. Like, why should you do this, right? Let's look at some of the benefits of it. We have the improvement of the cardiovascular and respiratory function. You know, with, when I talk about that, I'm, th I'm looking at the increased maximum oxygen uptake resulting from the both uh, central and peripheral adaptations. I'm also looking at increased capillary density in the skeletal muscles. We're also including increased exercise threshold for the accumulation of lactic in the, in the blood and also increased exercise threshold for the onset of disease signs and symptoms, right? We're gonna make sure that we're keeping that in line. We're also looking at reduction in cardiovascular risk factors, right? We're looking at reducing that resting systolic and diastolic pressure. I don't know if you guys ever heard of those words or maybe forgot, but the systolic number is the one that's up top and the diastolic number is the one that's on the bottom. So the more that you exercise, the more that we keep those numbers down. We have to worry about those numbers skyrocketing up. We're also looking at increased serum and the high density lipid cholesterol and also decreasing the serum and the triglycerides as well. Make sure we try to decrease those fatty acids as much as possible. Uh, this is a common one that a lot of guys, a lot of people know this one. You want to reduce your total body fat. And a common phrase, you know, I want to get rid of that muffin top or I want to get rid of this gut, my belly. You know, we, the scientific way is, you know, to say to reduce the intra abdominal fat. You know, you want to get rid of that adipose tissue that's around your abdominal area. That's a benefit of exercise. We're also looking at reduce insulin needs, you know, improve that, glu that glucose tolerance. So that way that your blood sugar isn't that isn't too high. All right, let's look at the next one. Decrease morbidity and mort morbidity and mortality. All right, we're looking at higher activity and higher fitness levels are associated with lower death rates from things like coronary artery disease. All right, we're also looking at higher activity and or fitness levels are also associated with lower incidence rates for, from coronary artery disease, from type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis fractures, and much more. So also be, also be mindful of that. And lastly, there are some other benefits as well to include de decrease anxiety and depression, you know, improve your cognitive function, also enhance your feeling of well-being, and also the prevention and mitigation of functional limitations in older adults. Now, this part of the lesson, I like to be interactive with you all. You know, I've talked a lot and I'm still going to talk some more, but I want to I I hear from you guys a little bit. So I want you guys to go into the chat room for me right now. Go into the chat room and I'm going to read out some common barriers for why you guys maybe don't exercise as often as you think you should or why don't you exercise at all. And so when I read these uh, common barriers to you guys, I just want you to put in the chat room. That's me. That's me. Sound like a plan for you guys? All righty. So let's do this. Let's say one of the common barriers is lack of time. Maybe just inconvenience. Right. Let's look at maybe lack of motivation. Maybe, maybe lack of encouragement. Maybe that maybe that's a reason for you why you don't exercise. What if it's just straight up not enjoyable? Right? You just don't enjoy it. Maybe that's you. Maybe you have a fear of injury. Maybe that's me. Maybe you have a you know a lack of support, right? You don't have a strong support system. Maybe there's lack of access. Maybe, you know, how, how can I get to the gym? Let's look at lack of self-esteem, self-consciousness, right? Maybe that's a factor. Um, was one of the most common ones, cost. Do you know how much gym membership costs nowadays? You tell me I got to pay $45 for a gym membership, man, you must be crazy. All right. I see those comments. I see you guys. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna talk about some barriers. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about those barriers, but now we're gonna talk about how to combat those barriers. Now I got a list of some common tactics for you all. And um, while they may not always align with the ones right to the right next to it, but we're gonna talk about it, see how can we attack these. So first one is let's organize our day, you know, and purposely schedule time to exercise. Let's 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 focus in on that key word that's that's in that's on all caps. Make it a priority. I'm about to come get some of you guys. Uh, 
I feel like some of you guys out here, you know, you like to watch Netflix or you like to watch, you know, reality TV shows or maybe even some sports fans out there as well. And or actually, I'm going to hit home with some of you as well. Maybe you enjoy that happy hour. Maybe you enjoy that social gathering with your friends, with your family. You know, you make that a priority. You set time for that, right? Why can't we get exercise that same regret, that, that same respect, the same regard, right? Make it a priority. I'll tell you guys a story. When I was in college, uh, my second semester of my freshman year, I was a bit, I had so many different obligations and tasks and requirements I needed to do during that semester that it was hard for me to find time to exercise. And I kid you not, I can literally, I will pull it, I can pull it up on my calendar back from 2014, 2015. I literally had my day broken down by the hour to when I was in class, when I was studying, when I was doing my homework, when I was doing different duties and obligations, when I was eating, and when I was exercising. I made it a priority. Make exercise a priority in your life. You know, schedule out time. If you can make time for happy hour, you make time for the Netflix, that Netflix show, make time for exercise. Like we talked about before, it all takes at least 30 minutes. At least 30 minutes. We can, we can find time for 30 minutes. Be great if we find time for an hour, but I'll set up a 30 right now. Now, let's look at finding a workout partner. You know, that can make exercise much enjoyable. You have someone that's in the grind with you, someone that's in the trenches that are sweating alongside you that's saying, whoo child, hey, this thing, this thing is kicking my butt today. You know, we, we have that someone that's beside us, that's right there with us, that's motivating us, that's also holding us accountable as well. Because let's, let's be honest, there's going to be days where you wake up and you're like, let's get after it, let's go, let's go. There's also going to be days where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling it today. This Today's not one of those days. That work apart is going to be there for you. That's going to, you know, encourage you to keep you going, you know, when those times get tough. Working with exercise physiologist or a fitness instructor. I'm going to hold off on that one. I'm going to talk about that one a little bit later, but a, a wink, wink. You know, there may be some, you know, a little bit of pitch selling in there. Create a fun and energetic playlist. Uh, I would say for me, one of the things that I enjoy doing is that for when I work out in the gym, um, I have a set playlist that I listen to that, that is designed for each body part that I'm working out. And I always have a theme song that I, that I walk into uh, that always gets me hype for the, for the, for the workout. Um, and I like to change it each month. So I'll give you guys a little bit of an insight right now. Now, for what he's done recently, I don't support. Um, but every time I walk into the gym, I always listen to a Kanye West song called Power. I don't know, something about that song just kind of just gets me excited, gets me hyped, gets me going and ready to, you know, accomplish that workout. Find your why, you know, find out what, why, why are you, why are you exercising? Why should I make exercise a priority? You know, why should I do this? We're going to talk about this a little bit later, but find your why and make sure you have more than one why. Maybe you start with a home exercise program, body weight exercise. This can get bad people that you were to say, hey, right now I just can't afford to, to go to Golds or go to American Family. You know, create a home exercise program. You'll be surprised of how many different exercises you can find online that you can easily do, right? And remember this, everybody has to start somewhere. You know, if you were to go to that gym and you see that big old muscle head that's picking up that 120 pound dumbbell, he didn't come out the womb lifting up that. I can guarantee you that. Everybody starts with starts somewhere. So remember, it's okay. The fact that it matters, let's focus on the fact that you are starting now or that you're starting, whenever you start, that you're starting. Don't worry about where, you, where you're at right now. Just worry about the fact that you are starting. That's the big thing. All right. Now, like I told you guys before, let's talk about our why. Finding your why. You know, whether, whether it's, you know, a weight goal. What if you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to gain weight? Or you're trying to fit into a specific piece of clothing where you're trying to fit into a dress or you're trying to fit into a blazer or no pair of jeans, whatever it may be. You know, that could be your why. Uh, let's say to be better at a specific sport. Let's say in order to be better at, you know, better at pickleball, you got to be able to have more cardio endurance. Or to be to be better at basketball, you got to be able to, you know, have more strength in your arms. Or what's your rugby? You know, whatever it may be. You know, you, you want to have that why. That's the reason why I'm exercising. Let's say to be active and active enough to engage in activities with your friends, with your kids, with your grandkids. You know, you want to be able to say, hey, then let's go out and do these things. Let's have a good time. Let's play pickleball. Let's play tennis. Or, you know, your kids are saying, hey, mommy, daddy, let's, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's play catch. You want, to have, you want to have the energy for that. Maybe for your grandkids as well, you want to have the energy to be able to say, hey, hey, brand baby, let's go ahead and let's do this. Let's do that. And not have them play catch for you for like two seconds. You're like, all right, baby, that's about where am I going to go and sit over here for a minute and pass out and, and like, you know, Take a nap for like 30 minutes. You want to have that in, that energy to keep on going. Maybe it's a strength goal. Maybe you're looking to get stronger. Maybe you want to say, hey, you know, I, 
I want to be able to lift 100 pounds. Maybe that's my why. Maybe it's management of the health stat, of status, you know, disease prevention, you know, because of family history. Maybe it's a therapy outlet. Maybe, you know, you use that and say, hey, man, I had a man, I, I had a bad day. I need to go ahead and get in the gym so I can work out some of this anger or frustration. Or maybe it's a, something for you to realize that, you know, for me, you know, working out allows me to know that I've accomplished something, that I've achieved something. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's increased job performance. You know, whatever it may be, find your why. I'm going to tell you guys some of my whys. You know, my, one of my whys is a strength goal. Uh, I want to be able to bench press 500 pounds to be able to squat 500 pounds. Uh, so that's the goal of mine. So that's the reason why I'm in the gym as much as I am. So I want to be in the, as close as I can to give myself the best opportunity to achieve that goal. Another one of mine is increase my job performance. Um, I tell people this all the time. I refuse to let my body and my fitness level be a limitation in my client sessions. Uh, if I have a spinal cord injury where they want to be on the, on, a, on a gliding standing frame and I have to pump for an hour straight, I'm going to do that. I don't want my body to be the reason why someone can enjoy their session. Or let's say if, you know, I get down on my hands and knees and I'm manually moving somebody's leg because the stem unit, the battery dies out. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that my client has the best session possible. Right. What is, you know, also I'm looking at, you know, I think about also, too, I think about my parents. You know, I think about my mom when I was 10 years old and she took me to the gym next to Woodbridge Apartments. Right. And I, and I think about all those years ago where she, you know, took me to the gym and I think about that investment, make sure that her investment didn't go to waste. Or I think about my father um, when he took, when he dropped me off at soccer practice in his work vehicle during this, during that same time frame, in hopes of promoting a healthy lifestyle. You know, I think about those times and I think about making sure that those, those actions that they took for me, that they invested in me a long time ago, that didn't go to waste. Um, but I have to warn you guys too, just be careful of solely intrinsic wise, and singular wise, you know, you're only exercising for one reason and you're solely only exercising for yourself. And understand, like I said, it's okay to have multiple whys. I just gave you guys three right there. Um, but I just wanna go back to the reason why I say be careful about the solely intrinsic wise. Because if it's all about you, we have the propensity to quit on ourselves. So it, sometimes it can't always be about you. It has to be about something else. I'm gonna say that again. If it's all about you, we have the propensity to quit on ourselves. Sometimes it can't always be about you. It has to be about something else. Now let's look at health management status. Let's say disease prevention, family history. You know, just like the example that I use, uh, let's say you exercise because you're trying to break the chain of, you know, overweight problems or obesity or, you know, high blood pressure, arthritis, whatever it may be that runs through your family. You know, you're exercising to break that chain, you know, that your forefathers and your foremothers had. But what about your children? You know, what about your friends that are also dealing with it as well? You know, you're gaining all this knowledge right now but wouldn't it, wouldn't it be right for you to, to inform them so that way they can work and break that negative chain as well and for that chain to stay broken? You know, they say one of the, the, one of the greatest gifts of knowledge is sharing. So after this, are you going to share this knowledge? Are you going to spread this gift? Yeah. Let's look at this trans theoretical model, right? We have the stages of change. We're going to break it down a little bit. We have the, we have the pre-contemplation stage, which is pretty, pretty much what people that are in this stage, they're inactive, they're not thinking about becoming active. These individuals do not currently engage in physical activity, nor do they plan on doing it in the near future. Maybe this is where you're at right now. Maybe this lecture is like, yeah, no, this is not speaking to me. No, sorry, I'm just only here because, you know, I had to fill the requirements or something like that. Let's look at the contemplation stage. Let's say that this is a stage where, you know, you're inactive, but you're, you're thinking about becoming more active, you know. These individuals are thinking about adopting physical activity and are planning on becoming more physically active in a reasonable time frame. Let's say that I'm a good salesman right now. And so far, you, you, the gears are turning about why should I exercise, right? Let's look at the preparation stage. Let's say individuals in these stages, stages they're doing some physical activity, uh, but they're not meeting those standards and the guidelines identified by the American College of Sports Medicine. So those guidelines that I detailed you guys earlier. Let's say you know you exercise, but you're not really doing what we need to do. Now let's look up to stage four, the action stage. You know, you're doing physical activity and these, and uh, let's say you're doing it for five days a week for at least 30 minutes each session, right? You know, you're participating in exercise, but you haven't been participating for as long as six months. You know, you're in that less than six months time frame. Or let's look at the maintenance stage. Let's say, you know, you're making physical activity a habit. You know, these individuals have been participating in regular physical activity at the recommended levels for at least six months. Now, this is a great stage, right? This is a great diagram. But while we like this upward trend, that's not how life normally is, right? 
you know, it's kind of often kind of times that like that social media versus reality trend, right? While we love it to look like this right here, this is what it typically looks like, right? Instead of that stair climb, we have that cyclical model process, right? As you can see, we started with the pre-contemplation stage. You start by the contemplation, preparation, action. Wait, 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 hold on. What's that? What's that yellow part right there? Relapse. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That monkey in the wrench right there. Let's say that you know you're you're getting going, you're getting going, but let's say you fall off the wagon a little bit. Let's say you 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 maybe you accomplish your why in less than six months. You're like, all right, well, I'm done. You know, and what I'm having, we go back into that same old loop again. We're back in that pre-contemplation stage. We're like, you know what, I don't want to exercise. Or let's make it let's make it even real. Let's say we get we get to even we get to that maintenance stage and boom, we have another relapse, right? You've been exercising for more than six months, but still, you know, it's you lose motivation, right? You lose that drive, that thirst. We have to remember that we have to keep going. Um, sometimes, you know, we can end up right where we started because of complacency. I'm going to tell you guys this. Complacency is a friend of the enemy. I'm going to say, say that again. Complacency is a friend of the enemy. Now, I don't know if you, if you guys remember back when we first started, I gave you guys a quote, right? What was that quote? It says, if you don't value consistency, it's going to be hard for you to become successful and sustain it. Consistency involves a level of commitment, a level of focus, a thirst, a hunger for more. Now, let's go back to this model right here. Now, it says, if you don't value consistency, it's going to be hard for you to become successful. And that key part out there, sustain it, right? We can, we can define success as you going from the, the pre-contemplation stage to the contemplation to the preparation, make it all the way to the action, right? But we didn't we became successful in that, but we didn't sustain it enough where we made it to that maintenance stage and stayed in there, right? We had a relapse. So you gotta remember that's why I go back to having those whys. You know, making sure that you remember those whys. Those whys are so imperative, they're so important. You know, and always create a new why. If you have a passion, you have a thirst to always be have a reason why you're in the gym, a why will always be present. So let's always remember that, right? Now. Let's say, all right, I've sold you guys to the point where like, your guys are looking at, all right, how can I get involved? Well, got a special treat. Now we're gonna be looking at how can you get involved with me at Shelter in Arms. Yep, this is where I work at right now. So we got three different service uh, lines I'm gonna detail for you guys a little bit later. So we're first gonna start with PowerX. See, PowerX is a physician referred semi uh, sur uh, supervised exercise program for individuals looking to establish a healthier lifestyle through exercise. Uh, pretty, pretty much what this does is for individuals that are looking to get back into the gym, but you know, maybe they're uncertain of how to do it, you know, how to write a program. What they're gonna do is they're gonna, you're gonna go through either a three month or a six month process uh, where you're gonna work with it along with exercise physiologists where you guys are gonna create an exercise program. You're gonna also create a schedule to where you're gonna hold yourself accountable to make sure you show up, whether it's two times a week or three times a week. You're gonna go work on your own, right? You're gonna be in the gym, you're gonna be either at the Bonner location or at the Reynolds location, you're gonna be working out. But if you have any questions, the exercise physiologist is gonna be available ready to, ready to answer any question you have for you or help you out with certain pieces of equipment. And some of the participants in this category can include the cardiovascular, the neurological, the orthopedic, the metabolic. Also people that are looking to just generally just get stronger, you know, maybe PowerX is a good, is a good opportunity for you. Adaptive exercise training. You know, this is, this is where, you know, maybe you're not looking back to the gym, but you're looking to have that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, exercise is just to be there for you to kind of guide you through these exercises all the time. You know, maybe you don't need to be hands-on, but you just still need to be present, still need to be there. Adaptive exercise training, I think, may be the best place for you, right? And a little bit later, I'm going to tell you guys where the locations of all these, so don't worry. Um, but I think we're gonna, I'm going to spend a little more time on this next one, which is NeuroFit. So this is what I do. So the NeuroFit is a neurological-based fitness space program geared to help individuals that are living with neurological injuries, such as spinal cord injuries, Parkinson's, neuropathy, things of that nature. And what we do is we provide them a fitness-based program geared to the goals that they've set in physical therapy or outside goals that they set. And we have some of the state-of-the-art technology, as you can see in the picture of the young man on the, on the left. Uh, we're able to do this to facilitate their fitness progression or maintain what they have so far that they've gotten from physical therapy. So it's a great program that I am a part of, and I love it. Uh, not a day goes by where I don't think about just the blessing that I am to be able to be in this world to impact his lives as, I, as much as I can. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit some videos about of showing what I do here. So we have three videos right here. Uh, let's start with the first one right here, the Indigo. 
right? So this, this robot right here. So the indigo is a lower extremity exoskeleton that provides a highly individualized gait therapy uh, for spinal cord injuries or stroke survivors. Its adjustable settings allow it to be tailored for a wide range of appropriate individuals. The pros include, you know, increasing improving blood flow, improving GI tract function, and a, main, and a great maintenance program for bone density levels. Let's look at this one right here. This young man is doing some tall knit exercising, but he's doing it with, by doing some ab rollouts, right? Being adaptive. I love this. I love this. Let's look at this one right here. Right here, we have some tricep dips done with TRX bands. Uh, if you guys have never tried this, I encourage you guys to try this. It's not as it's not as easy as it looks. It's very difficult. Um, this is a great program. It's a great uh, exercise right here that just gets those triceps going, but also being that neuromotor exercise as well. All right. Now let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next slide. All right. So locations. So as I told before, let's see. Power X. That's at the Bonaire and Reynolds location. The address are detailed on the screen. We also have adaptive exercise training, as you can see, that's at the, also at the Bonner location and, and the Reynolds location, address on the screen as well, and NeuroFit, which I happen to be a part of. This is at the Hanover location, as you can see, the address is on the screen as well. So if you think one of those three categories, one of those three service lines best suits you, call up. You can, I'm going to tell you guys to do this right here. You can go you can go with Shelter Arms. You can look for the fitness and wellness program uh, tab and look from there and search it up. Uh, or you can also email me with my email that's on the screen as well. If you're looking for uh, more resources or just have some questions, that, that, you can do that right there. Now, are there any questions about anything that we talked about today that you guys want to talk about? Any questions? Any questions? If you have questions, you can throw them into the chat or um, you can also raise your hand using the little um, reaction uh, choice, and I'm happy to help uh, convey those questions. All right, I see a hand up from, I think it's a Galaxy phone. Um, you can go ahead and unmute and ask your question if you'd like. So I might have missed some of it, but what kind of exercise can I do sitting from my desk? Awesome, great question. Uh, so some exercises you can do is you can do seated marches, right? You can be marching while you're at the desk. Let's say you can do some, you can do some overhead press. You can just sit there, raise the roof while, while, while you're while you're sitting there doing that desk job. Uh, you also do some type of, let's say you're just doing some lateral raises. Let's say you stand up for a little bit and just, hey, let me just do some calf raises while I'm, while I'm working, you know, things of that nature. Body weight exercises are great to do while you're on the job. Uh, it's very easy for you guys to just kind of get some there. It's about being creative at the same time. Um, if you have, if, what we can do is I can, uh, if you want to email me, um, I can provide you some more size that you can do that will be at, well, at your desk. What a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Belinda, I saw your hand up next. If you'd like to unmute and ask your question. Yes. Hi. Um, my question is, I live closer to the Hanover location. And um, I see that um, the only program that you offer there is the NeuroFit. And um, I, I have multiple sclerosis. And um, I am not to the point that, you know, like I need the um, ectoskeleton or anything like that. But I do need to improve, you know, um, in my exercise and balance and everything like that. And eventually I would like to do weight training. I don't know if NeuroFit is for me. I'm not sure. So what would you suggest? All right. Great question. So if you're trying to work on balance and work on your gait mechanics and that nature, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, uh, but there is a vector right there, uh, which is a body weight support system that we can use to kind of help promote uh, balance exercises. We can also promote gait mechanics as well um, and promote endurance as well in things that I regard. If I, had to, if, I, if I had the capacity, I would give you guys a tour of the clinic, but we also, can, we also have a, a Smith machine as well with different ways where we can do squats, we can do uh, bench press as well to kind of build up that strength as well too. So uh, we also, we do see people that have uh, MS, so you, I think you'll be a great candidate. So we have many different things that we can do here to kind of help promote your fitness level and also help promote your overall health as well. And all of that is at the Hanover location? Yes, ma'am. Well, but to get into the program, 
I have to get my doctor to refer me? So no, ma'am, not exactly. Um, so let's say if you want an, an external referral, you can go to the website. And what you're going to go, when you get to that fitness and wellness tab, you're going to go, you're going to click on NeuroFit. And you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom past, you know, all the different uh, details. You're going to go past the bios of the exercise physiologist. And you're going to see, like, contact. Um, and from there, you're going to be able to input your name, um, your number, and an email address, I believe. It's been a long time since I've actually seen that portion of it. And our administrative uh, person will get in contact with you and kind of get some more questions. Uh, get some more answers from you. And then from there, she'll refer you right to me. Okay. Now, are you a physiologist? Yes, ma'am. I'm an exercise physiologist. Oh, okay. So if in that program, would I be working one-on-one -on -one with you? Yes, ma'am. You'll be working with me. Okay. One of, of my other exercise physiologists. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, thank you very much. No problem. And before I jump to the next question, I want to reassure you all, um, I have your, your email addresses because you registered, so I will make sure that I follow up um, with the links to uh, the NeuroFit program and the other programs that Alexander has mentioned as well. Um, Danica, I think you had your hand up next if you'd like to ask your question. Danica was here and then she disappeared. Hang on, let's um, go to Kinsley and then we'll go back to, De De to Danica, excuse me. Well, just kind of like what the lady was saying about doing stuff at her desk, but I had a stroke. So what's the best arm exercise for me because I'm weak on my left side? Great question, great question. Uh, so you can do things that, you know, for example, like lateral raises, uh, where you can do front raises, where you're holding that non, you're holding your affected side with your non affected side arm, and you're doing the motion like this, kind of getting that, that shoulder movement. Um, you can do a lot of things as well, as far as like bench pressing, you can have like, for example, like a body bar. Uh, if you have a gripper, if you need a gripper, from there, you can kind of do chest press like that. Um, you can also work on weight bearing exercises, for example, like if you have a wheelchair, if you have like a desk or something like that, and you can lean against your, you lean your affected side arm against that desk and kind of work on putting weight through there. Um, that's a great exercise as well to do. That's very undervalued valued and not done enough. Um, those arm weight bearing exercises. Um, bicep curls too are also great as well. It's any movement that you can do um, with your affected side is beneficial. Uh, the common phrase is, is uh, use it before you lose it. So do as much as you can um, with whatever resource that you have as far as, you know, just, you know uh, in that regard. Also, too, uh, if you want to look online as well, there are great, 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 great videos on YouTube as well that are great for uh, stroke survivors and have different exercises that as well that detail. And also an exercise program, too, uh, that would be very beneficial. Thank you. No problem. Caitlin, sorry, it's Danica. <laughs> I thought you accidentally left. So we jumped to Kinsley, but we'll go back to you. What's your question, Danica? Okay, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to share that I did um, Power X with Shannon at Bonaire. And I just wanted to tell everyone that it's awesome. So I, I, hadn't gone to the gym in a while and I started Power X and it got me started in 2016 and I haven't stopped since 2016. So it's a good like get you started type thing. Like I have multiple sclerosis also and my reason for doing it was I wanted to do the um do walk MS that that year I was a team captain for the first year and that was my goal and since then I haven't stopped doing the workout type things so I strongly suggest and tell people to go to sheltering arms go ahead Eleanor oh whoops hi everyone I'm Eleanor and I'm a stroke survivor I have been a client of Alex's and in NeuroFit for over two, just about two years. And let me make a plug for Alex. He's creative, he pushes me, he's tough. He constantly gives me goals for every single 
session and I adore NeuroFit. It's very effective and a lot, even though I use a lot of technology at Hanover, I'm able to take the principles and some of the exercises Alex and I do and bring them back to my home gym or my gym up the street. Um, he's the man and NeuroFit is the bomb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for such uh, glowing testimonials. I promise we did not plant Eleanor and Danica. They just were here because they they care about this. They're, um, you know, great sportable athletes as well. So I really appreciate uh, y'all sharing your experiences with Power X and NeuroFit. Yvonne, you had your hand up too with a question. Yvonne, are you able to unmute yourself to ask your question? Okay, now I'm sorry. It just took me a while to get it. But anyway, I, ha I have two questions really. One is like, what are the hours for the facilities and what days of the week and what hours are um, the facilities open? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so for, I have to double check with Bonner and Reynolds because I'm not there. I only go there when they when we have meetings and things of that nature. But I can take the one for Hanover. Uh, so for NeuroFit, we work our sessions start at 8 a.m. and sessions end at 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, the sessions begin at 8 a.m. And then the last session, which is Eleanor for me, uh, begins at 12 o'clock and end, ends at one o'clock. And then we leave around like 1 30, 2 o'clock. I believe for the Bonaire location, uh, the time is 8 to 4.30, Monday through Fridays. And I believe it's the same thing with rentals. I have to double check that. Let us need those within the times. Okay. And then the other question that I had is, is there um, a, an assessment that a person could take to decide which program would be the best one for them? Yes, ma'am. So uh, let's say if you decide to say, hey, you know, since uh, you're talking to this guy right here, you're like, hey, I'm just going to register to try to do an evaluation with me uh, from there we can do an assessment kind of see what we're looking at what are your goals and what do you need and then from there we can say hey maybe neurofic is the best place for you or i can say hey you know based on the goals that you've outlined to me and give in detail to me before i think adaptive exercise training may be the best fit for you given like your your diagnoses or maybe power x is what you want to be at so most definitely we can definitely assess that and from there they'll let you know what's gonna be the best fit for you and then direct you to the best pathway possible Okay, thank you. No problem. Sorry, your name's not on the Zoom, but I, it's the person who's calling from the galaxy again. I know your hand is up. I'm not sure if it's still up. Did you have another question? I do. Go for so it. So my question, my question is, um, in 2016, I was in an automobile accident and my shoulder is injured. So my 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 worry is if i take exercise is it going to injure me more like i went through physical therapy and it didn't help so i'm wondering i, I can barely lift my my left arm and then in my groin area on my right leg that's also injured so so i'm just wondering what will some of these things that he was talking about what will it do to me is it going will it harm me more or not? Great question. So um, one thing too is that I kind of detailed before is that use it before you lose it kind of deal. Um, and I talked to before where there's that four different types of exercise. So maybe that anaerobic exercise may not be what you're looking for when it comes to you know, that shoulder training. Maybe you're looking at more of that flexibility, that range of motion. Maybe right now we need to focus on that so that we don't get things like, for example, that frozen shoulder. And also too, we gotta understand too, we gotta be, we gotta be patient as well. Um, things just don't happen overnight, right? There, there, there's a process. You don't, you don't plant a seed and then that night and then the next morning you see a flower bloom, right? It's not like that. It takes time. So while you may be in the same physical therapy for six months or to a year, not all your problems are going to be fixed within that time frame. We have to continue to do that. I think about when we go back to that trans theoretical model, right? We're, we're, we're still working out. We're still doing what we need to do. We just don't stop, right? Just because, like I said, that why, 
right? So you went to physical therapy, right? Why? To fix your shoulder, right? But then you got you got done with physical therapy and then you stopped, right? We still have to remember that why of like we want to keep on going, keep on doing because from there, if you if you stop, you halt your own process, right? You got to keep on going because then from there, if you if you keep that journey going, who knows where it could go from there? So maybe strength training isn't the route that you want to take with that anaerobics uh, mindset. Maybe you're looking at that flexibility. Maybe you're looking at that, that, that dynamic stretching from there. Maybe you're looking at, you know, in the morning doing those, pa those passive static stretching to make sure that, you know, you're, you're keeping that range of motion. And then once you feel more confident from there from, and not have to worry about injury, maybe from there we can, we can think about looking at some of the anaerobic exercises. And then remind me, what was your second question? Or did I answer your questions? I think you answered it all. I, I was just basically wondering because it's my shoulder and my inner that my groin area my thigh. I just wanted to make sure if I was to do any kind of because I sit at the desk all day, honestly, and if I, both of them stiffens up on me all day long. So and then you see I'm dealing with a grandbaby here, so he's a lot for the arm, and I'm just wondering will it mess it up? But you kind of answer my question. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I'm just so we could eat. Yeah. yeah. Eleanor, did you have another question or comment? I see your hand. Um, uh, no, I'm going to have to bounce. I'm so sorry, but thank okay. you. Y'all keep moving. In my mind, as a stroke survivor, it's all about movement. I was a cardio junkie before my stroke and Cardio now just looks different and it doesn't feel any different, but, um, you know, it's all about functional movement for me instead of a step class or a cycle class. It's functional movement and I, I do cycle as Caitlin Berry knows and Alex, et cetera. It just is perhaps on a different type of uh, a bike and I'm still getting my heart rate up, just maybe not in a group exercise format in a class. I'm doing it on my own, listening to a podcast, but pedaling on a recumbent bike. And to me, exercise now is just all about functional movement, moving my body, getting my heart rate up, working on the four pillars that Alex talked about, the flexibility. Um, I don't remember the four pillars. Um, strength, flexibility. Alex, help me. <laughs> um, you're looking at the aerobic, anaerobic, flexibility, and neuromotor training. Ah, there you go. Which you will be doing tomorrow, so be prepared. Yes, sir. Bring it. <laughs> well, you know I will. You know I will. Thank you all. I loved it, but I'm gonna have to bounce. Sorry. That's okay, Eleanor. I think with that um, last kind of comment, we'll we'll wrap it up for today. So um, I know some people join late, but I am. My name is Caitlin Barry. I'm the Health and Wellness Outcomes Manager at Sportable. We provide a variety of adaptive sports and recreation, and now some wellness activities too for people who have physical disabilities. Um, and we are just proud to partner with Sheltering Arms and SAI um, to address the whole health wellness of individuals with uh, physical disabilities or cognitive disabilities like TBI and stroke um, within our greater Richmond community. So I'm so glad that Alex could present today on more of the fundamentals of exercise, what you need to know, um, and give you some resources to get started on your exercise journey. So thank you again, Alexander, for being with us tonight. Um, this recording will be sent out and available on YouTube, and I will follow up. If it's not tomorrow, I promise it'll be uh, by Wednesday with um, some follow-up resources in the recording as well. But thank you all for spending your Monday evening with us. Alex, do you have any final thoughts or comments? Uh, no, again, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me uh, and let me borrow an hour of your time. Uh, you didn't have to, but you decided to, so I just want to tell you guys thank you so much. Um, if you guys have any questions, any thoughts, concerns that may not come up at this current moment, maybe later on, uh, my email is going to be in the uh, webinar so that way you guys can check it out. And again, just thank you guys so much. Truly appreciate every, each and every one of you for taking the time out to come out and watch the webinar. All right. Thanks again, y'all. Have a good evening. See you guys.